welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Espresso on S3, and we're diving straight into today's conversation because in a world where convenience and instant gratification reign supreme, it seems that even relationships are not immune to the effects of our digital era. Now, today we delve into the unsettling trend of quiet quitting in a relationship, and this is where individuals are choosing to break up or get divorced rather than putting in the effort. And joining us for this conversation, conversation and to unravel the factors behind the shift and to explore its implications for love and commitment we have counselor uh, Shanaz Moors as well as Blythe Brigg and Christiane Irene with us in studio good morning yeah, good, good morning, morning ladies <laughs> thank you for joining us familiar faces and some new faces so this mm -hmm. is exciting and I see we have a power panel here I'm gonna <laughs> throw this one out anyone can grab it I just want to find out firstly why is this trend suddenly appearing why has it even uh, started to increase the way it has. Why are we quietly quitting in our relationships? What's going on, guys? What's happening? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I take Yeah, for sure. for sure. So I think if you know where the trend started in the workplace, it was the pandemic and mm. people starting to do withdraw because they didn't feel fulfilled, right? Okay. It then spread outside of the workplace into relationships. Seems like an easier way to emotionally withdraw than actually say, I'm out or I've had enough or let's go to therapy. It's just like a disengagement that's actually taking place. But you mentioned fulfillment there, which I noticed is quite important because that's yes. what we're acting on. There's no fulfillment, and instead of addressing it, you mm. kindly slip out, right? Yeah. All right, okay, this is making sense. <laughs> is it a case of slipping out or perhaps looking elsewhere? Blythe, I'm going to ask mm. you this question. <laughs> Since we are in the digital era, do you think that has impacted people being more willing to rather quiet quit than put in the hard work and see things through? I think there's definitely been an impact because when you when the grass looks greener on the other side, you know, we quite literally have so many options in our hands. And those options aren't what you have right in front of you where you see the good and the bad. You're only seeing the good of those sides. Mm. So it makes it very easy for you to just, okay, this is hard, I'm gonna go find something else, versus let's stick around and let's work for it. But I personally think the biggest, the biggest issue is communication, learning how to actually have that conversation with your loved one. Yeah. yeah. Christian, maybe I can ask you this. In your world, have you experienced other things? I know Shanaz briefly touched on other environments having an impact and external environments having an impact. And if I look at South Africa especially, we've got so much going on right now that we're dealing with mm -hmm. that we're almost like forced into a relationship with our country and the politics and everything else that's going on that we might not have time to focus on our real relationships. Absolutely. Is this potentially the case or are we really being impacted by the external right now? As you mentioned South Africa, look at South Africa, the social, the political, the economic, yeah. the pressures that we face, the absolute crises that we face. Look at our pandemic, look at our load shedding, look at our drought. All of these have immense impacts on the individuals. Now consider the relationships that these individuals hold. They don't have the time for themselves. Yeah. How can they have the time for the relationship that they have? 100%, yeah. Shanaz, does the fear of vulnerability and, you know, intimacy also play a uh, people are still afraid to, to be vulnerable. Do you think that also leads to, to people rather going quiet quitting than actually being vulnerable in a relationship? Yeah, I think the vulnerability is linked to the authenticity and we know that individuality isn't always welcomed. So mm -hmm. that fear of if I am my true self, will my partner reject me? So that showing who you really are isn't always feeling like an option. Um, and true intimacy can only be achieved with vulnerability. So that connection needs to take place at that level to sustain, you know, an a, a intimate relationship for the longer period. Mm, I like that. Blythe, maybe you can weigh in on this one. And I'm going to be a bit more, like, personalized in terms of this question. I'm a guy that has experienced the fear of vulnerability, mm -hmm. which you've just mentioned now. And that's me being honest, right? Guys don't always want to deal with that emotion. They sometimes fight or, fl fight or flight, we run. And, and I, I find that to be the case with lots of friends. When things get real in the relationship and you have to address real problems, often the guy's like, nah, this is not lack anymore. I'm going to bounce. Like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. Do you find that the reason for that is maybe the societal pressure placed on maybe males and the interpretation of what must happen in a relationship? M meaning, if I date you, eventually we need to get married. And that pressure of, like, I have to see it through all the way to the end. 
is that apparent, or is this just me, the guy, being like trying to figure out this world right now, and this is just the chaos of it all? Yeah. I think it really depends on on the relationship itself. You know, there are different societies and very much cultural norms that are around with co whether or not you get married, or whether you know, as soon as you start dating, this is for marriage, or yeah. the other cultures where we're going to date and see how it goes. I think it's very very culturally related in terms of those type of expectations, but. In terms of vulnerability and being able to, to discuss that, I think that's where we need to kind of break away from those norms of men not being able to discuss how they see a relationship. And yeah. if, you, if you need to look around, if you need to feel comfortable, that's, that's how you do that, is to open up and have the floor to have those words and discussions with your loved one. All right. Mm. A little bit easier said than done, though. It's scary, girl. You're talking about feelings. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> well, Christy, and this question's for you, because, um, you know, often you have partners are connected to each other and that's where the communication is great and then you have sides where one partner is connected more to another partner mm. and perhaps they can sense hang on they are not being themselves perhaps that partner is trying to quiet quit mm. what do you what advice do you have for that person that could sense their partners withdrawing but they don't know how to address it and they don't want to leave it for it to be too late what a fantastic question. Almost what can you do to preempt this? What can you do before it even strikes? Yeah. Can't stress this enough, and I'm sure there's enough sayings to go with it, but communication is key. Not only the communication of talking. We can all talk. I'm talking right now. But the communication of actually listening. Listening to what your partner has to say. Listening to who your partner really is and how each of you can be each other, your true authentic selves in that relationship, making space for all of the efforts needed to uphold that healthy relationship. Oh. Thank you. I love that. Yeah, Communication, love that. something that's absolutely imperative right now, and so is this conversation too. So again, Mzanzi, come through and weigh in on any of your opinions when it comes to quiet quitting. We are talking about right now, we're going to dive into more of these questions, but the number is obviously 63 Come through, we've got the specialist here, and we are here to serve you. See you in just a bit. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Oh yes, Mzanzi, welcome back. Your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And let's dive straight back into an incredible conversation on quiet quitting. Now, as technology continues to reshape the way we interact and connect, relationships find themselves navigating uncharted territory. Mm. Now, in this segment, we're going to explore the rise of quiet quitting in relationships. And again, we've got uh, the exceptional uh, panel this morning of counselors, Shanaz Moose. We've got Blythe Brigg, as well as Christiane Irene in the building once again. And thank you for that first session. Absolutely loved it. Shanaz, I'm going to start off with you because, you know, the rise of social media, smartphones, having dating apps on your phone, how has that basically contributed to people's approach to seeing things through in a relationship? having that abundance mm. at their fingertips? Well, you don't have to go far to get options. I think that's the first thing. Mm. And that we often are looking with the eye, not the heart. So when we're looking and we are looking at the dating apps, we're seeing what is appealing to us without knowing really who it is. So that part of dating has become easier, choosing. Um, and sometimes people go out with multiple people simultaneously, mm. waiting to hit the spark. Um, so that was something people didn't do back in way, way in my day. <laughs> um, you did like in-person dating. So the, the, the landscape has changed. There are positives to it, but I think that you have to have a good sense of yourself to put yourself on social media or on a dating app so that you make good choices. Yeah, that's true. And for me, it's such an interesting space, like you mentioned, to navigate mm -hmm. this world where there's the pro of digital access, allowing us to connect and meet people that you would never meet in your entire life. And it creates these beautiful connections. But at the same time, you mentioned it also provides us with potentially too much choice. Mm. Right, maybe you can uh, add to this. Do you think that that ability to have a choice and quickly decide that, ah, it's not for me, on to the next, do you think that's also aiding in us quietly quitting relationships because, ah, on to the next? I definitely think so. It's it's such a it's such a big thing to have literally thousands of fish in the sea yeah, at just the swipe yeah. of a finger at the moment. And what happens is, you know, you you can't you can't in ignite that spark if you if you have 50 million sparks to ignite at the same mm. time, and you won't be able to see which one is actually working for you. If you if you start to walk away from the first ick, as they as they're calling it, then you will never know if that person was willing to change what they were doing mm. to help you. And it's it's quite a scary concept to think that you know. 
you're going to walk away at every tiny little bit of a hardship instead of just just communicating that actually I don't like it when you put an extra sugar in my coffee for instance <laughs> and and that could be a reason why somebody walks away and finds someone else and then as soon as it gets serious the same thing happens but also just that inability to you know it's that that external pressure of there's so much out there and there's what if there's someone better, better what if there's yeah. someone there and being able to literally just scroll like through yeah. and just see who is out there and seeing the best of everyone else Very it, true. Yeah. and we're keeping the spotlight with you know going online being on our phones Christy Ann are there perhaps certain behaviors for like online behaviors and activities that could lead to the erosion of commitment Oh my goodness, absolutely. <laughs> Where do we begin? <laughs> exactly, it's a list. But truly, some of the ones I think is more hard-hitting is we almost have to face the reality of our online addictions in this world today. Mm. The tendency to constantly scroll, the tendency to swipe, swipe, swipe. We take the same tendencies we use on TikTok and apply them to freaking Tinder. Mm. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Instant satisfaction, mm. swipe, mm. swipe, swipe instant satisfaction and sadly this behavior is almost deter deterring people from committing to one another mm. can't commit to a TikTok; it's less than three minutes <laughs> you can't connect to a relationship yeah. and truly we're seeing this trend changing from the to death do we part mm. to the much more temporary almost unattainable relationships we're seeing today yeah mm. so Jonas, maybe you can weigh in on something a bit more practical yeah let's let's look at this from an approach of how do we do this thing called balance in this new world of dating where there's this digital era but you still get people that resonate with the old school with that practical touch and that personal feeling how do we in this world navigate the space how would you consider seeing that I think you you you've seen things from both perspectives mm. clearly you've got the polarity to see things mm -hmm. with a beautiful holistic eye how do we inc incorporate this balance in our lives and in, in dating specifically well, December I was part of a marriage conference where okay. they had this meetup. So if you were looking to be aligned with somebody, you filled out a questionnaire and all these things and then they matched people up. Yeah. I wasn't part of that part, but it was, it was interesting because the age groups of the people that signed up, a lot of the men were older and the women were younger. Ah. So it was interesting. So I think that when we talk about the way people used to meet before doesn't happen. Family gatherings and those hangouts, people don't do that much anymore. So the social media and dating apps and all those other things have made a new path for people to meet up. Having a healthy self-esteem is really crucial to navigating mm. dating in person, online, doesn't actually matter. And I think that should be the balance people should work on. Don't wait for mental crisis, just work on mental and emotional well-being. Mm. And then you can basically do anything because you'll be your best self. So, yeah. You'll be your that. best self. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, you mentioned earlier there are good and there are bad things to social media mm. and being in the digital space. Perhaps, Blythe, you can shed some light on how can couples utilise technology and the digital apps that's available to them to help strengthen their bond instead of causing that erosion. Yeah, yeah so that's the, that's the other side of the coin is that while technology can be causing many negatives, there's this beautiful ability to capture any information you want at any given time. And that's, that's wonderful because you're struggling in a relationship. You can quite literally Google your exact issue and I promise there'll be some sort of paper out there that, yeah. helps, that shows you what to do. <laughs> it's just the matter of getting to that point where you're willing to admit and sit down and say, okay, there is a problem here, so let's, let's find a solution and getting to the point where you want to work towards finding a better, better situation. And that's definitely possible. There are so many apps. There's mental health apps you can download that send you notifications. There's gratitude exercises and there's countless countless articles on how to communicate how to work through relationships so it's definitely amazing to see that there are so many benefits on the other end of the scale yeah. oh, well look ladies this has been an incredible conversation thank you so much for joining us this morning mm -hmm. shedding some light in this new world we're all trying to navigate and i think all your insights have been very pertinent and very accepted for not only us but i think Mzanzi too as well and this is the conversation we carry on with right now obviously we're talking about relationships and quiet quitting in relationships and we want to know have you been there or did you notice signs that your partner was quiet quitting the relationship and tell us about your personal experience and uh, you should have come through on our whatsapp line it's 063408 8863 so let's see 
what you all had to say. Okay, well, we're looking on Facebook right now. Norquest says, my partner and I, we've been together for 15 years, and we were going through a rough patch, and I just had a baby. Sure. Then I don't know, but I felt disconnected, unloved, and we weren't communicating. So I stopped touching, kissing him. I just wanted to be alone, but while I'm with him. So... Yeah. Mm. This is a real situation, right? I mean, I'm sure you've possibly engage with someone going through this prior to, uh, I mean, even providing a solution. Mm -hmm. What do you do in this instance? What do you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. Is there a solution? It's definitely. I don't know if you want to. I'll just take it all the way back to communication yeah. once again. Mm -hmm. Firstly, of course, when it gets to the point that this person is at, they have a baby, they have the relationship, they have so many things that can bring up those fears mm. to have these hard-hitting conversations. Fear is one of our biggest prisons we face, and truly being trapped by your own fear of what you could be dealing with if I bring this up. What, could, what kind of worms could I be opening? Yeah. Those big what-ifs truly do keep us trapped. However, they also stop us from becoming more productive in our relationships. If we were to almost step into that productive shoe, take the fear and almost master it so that we can take our relationship out of that funk that it's in, and into a much more healthy state, really through having these hard-hitting conversations. Thank, Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we've got another comment that came through on Facebook. This one from Nandi saying, my ex was ghosting me. He would not call or text as before. When you ask, he'll always, he always had a story. Either he didn't have network or he was busy at work. So this person obviously had a bunch of excuses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm no expert here, but I'm looking at this and clearly this person is not interested mm -hmm. in Nandi, yeah. but it still hurts being on the receiving end of being ghosted and not having that closure. Mm -hmm. Do any of you perhaps have some advice for Nandi in this, with this regard? <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that we take it back to, to the fact that when you learn to love yourself and you build up your own self-esteem, you will recognize your worth. And the number one thing to remember is if somebody is making you feel like you are unloved, that is them making you feel like that, not yourself. So if you're sitting there questioning, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth that questioning. There's, a different, there's obviously different levels to that. If you're somebody who overthinks and worries, then you might just need a little bit more co communication from your partner to say that you are loved. But in terms of that, you know, ghosting and, and not, not communicating, the number one thing is to recognize your worth and put down your boundaries of what you're willing to put up with in a relationship. Oh, I couldn't have said it better. This is why we brought you in. <laughs> well, again, thank you, ladies. This was ooh, an incredible conversation. I'm just losing my cool here, just realizing <laughs> the excitement and the potential of what could be when you don't quietly quit. Mm. How you could actually allow for a relationship that mutually benefits each other and grows to a point where it's absolute magic. And that's something you can get if you don't quietly quit. Mm. But you've got to have a reason and you've got to have a why. So maybe this has sparked a new interest in your relationship. Come through with those uh, comments. Uh, we've got their WhatsApp line open, of course. It's 63 408 But don't go anywhere. Incredible conversations like this are going to carry on in just a bit.